Okay, I'd like to talk about Twitter studies. So, so how do you study Twitter, um, and what do you um, have as a as an output, and what kind of claims can you make? Um, so, what I want to start with is is, a, is an important distinction, uh, and 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 that is. What sort of Twitter are you studying when you're studying Twitter? And, and I want to distinguish between three kinds of Twitters. Um, as I mentioned, Twitter 1, uh, Twitter 2, and Twitter 3. And, and, and I, I want to periodize uh, Twitter studies. I'd like to periodize Twitter as an, as an object, uh, but also as an object of study. And, and I think these things actually go hand in hand. Um, I will carve up the history of Twitter into three periods. Um, the first one um, is the banal or banal Twitter. So the, the, the what I'm having for lunch Twitter. And, and Twitter was um, the object of much um, scholarly scorn, uh, so to speak. Uh, when one uh, put forward the idea that we would study, that one could study Twitter substantively. However, there were approaches to studying Twitter, non or subst yeah, non substantive approaches to studying Twitter. Um, and one was um, Twitter as, um, uh, as FATIC. Uh, now, fat, the idea of FATIC communication goes back to the work of the famous. Um, anthropologist in the 1920s, Malinowski, who, having spent uh, quite some time in the uh, uh, in remote South Pacific islands, um, put forward the notion of, uh, in some sense, the study of small talk and the productivity of small talk. Uh, emphatic communication is communication whereby you aren't necessarily exchanging substantive information, but rather you are connecting socially with the other person. So if someone says to you, how are you doing? Um, you should not necessarily take that as a, as a question to be answered substantively. So exactly how you're doing. But rather, someone is trying to connect with you socially. Yeah, so that is phatic communication. The other very important term that was introduced um, was something called ambient friend following. Uh, so it's Twitter as, yeah, not necessarily banal, but rather as something intimate, uh, where you would, where you would uh, know um, the, the, the minute, the minute details of, of someone's everyday life, which would seem meaningless to most, but is extremely meaningful to you as a friend. Uh, and, and this idea of always being in that friend's space, if you will, remotely, is this notion of ambient, uh, ambient following. Um, now, at some point that changed and, and, and or um, did not become the dominant narrative surrounding Twitter, Twitter uh, but, but rather, um, Twitter too came to the fore um, as a as a news f following uh, medium. So Twitter, of course, was in some sense marketed as that originally, um, as something to be used at events, as conferences. Uh, most famously, it was used at the South by Southwest um, conference uh, in Austin, Texas in the U.S., which launched Twitter as an important medium. It was considered to be this sort of back channel, this, uh, this, this, this medium, this space uh, for conversation um, uh, on the backstage. So whilst, the, whilst people were speaking on the front stage, um, the audience uh, would chat about it uh, on, uh, on a back channel. And, and this idea of, of Twitter as, as being relevant for events um, was, was something that was there from the beginning, but really uh, caught on uh, only a little bit later. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then finally, Twitter 3. And I think Twitter 3, uh, in some sense, corresponds with, this, with the stock market uh, offering, with Twitter becoming uh, um, this, 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 this publicly traded company, which, which then 
um, needs to speak um, to, its, uh, to, its, uh, to its shareholders first and, and to its users uh, second. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, <clears throat> now, here are the periods. Uh, so Twitter um, launching 2006. Um, and what's important is, in some sense, what you're being asked to do when you tweet. So in, in, in 2000, from 2006 to 2009, um, the question was, what are you doing? And this what are you doing question um, was, was a question um, which uh, gave Twitter its, um, yeah, its sort of <coughs> like title or as a, as, a, um, as a particular kind of medium, as one where the users provide status updates, so what they're up to. And it's interesting, if you look at the very, very first sketch for Twitter, uh, which is this one. This is by Jack Dorsey. It's on his Flickr account. Um, if you look up uh, Dorsey on Flickr, he spent, I don't know, about two, two, two and a half years, three years, uh, uploading well, sort of sporadically pictures to, to Flickr. And it's, a, it's, it's in some sense a, um, a reflection of the early days of Twitter and the kind of lifestyle of Dorsey and the lifestyle of, of, of the number of, of, in some sense, the first Twitter user, which, which is Dorsey himself. Uh, the first tweet uh, was by, by Dorsey. And, and you see here um, the, the first Twitter sketch. You see, you see a number of things here. Um, the first thing is, is you see that the, that the, uh, that the proposed name was was, well, stat us, so S-T-A-T -T dot U-S, which is a domain name, a top-level domain name, top-level country code domain name hack, uh, which was sort of popular then, or hip, like delicious, the social bookmarking service also as dot U-S, but it was, but it was part of its name. So the, um, and you see that you have a couple of options of what it is that you're doing. Uh, option number one is you're in bed, uh, and option number two is going to the park. So it gives you a, pretty, a kind of sense of what one's lifestyle is as a sort of young urbanite um, in San Francisco. Um, and then this would, th this would allow you to follow your, your friends and find out what they're up to. Um, and, what they're, and then you could post your, your, your status, um, so what you're up to. Um, Now, sometime around um, 2009, um, uh, this started to change. Um, uh, and it started to change around the time uh, when um, there was a change in leadership at Twitter. So, so Jack Dorsey, the, the sort of the young urbanite Twitter founder, was. Uh, was was forced out, um, and the business reoriented itself to what it was most successful at, and that is uh, events. Um, and it was reacting, in some sense, to these sorts of studies, so that Twitter was beginning to be considered as um, as 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 a as a banal medium, as something that was just full of babble. So this is from Pair Analytics, a uh, sort of famous marketing study um, from August of 2009, so right around the time of the shift in, in Twitter, um, where um, uh, the study was found that, that most things were, were in fact, uh, most tweets were in fact uh, babble or, uh, or, or, or just conversation. And so there, there were very, very few tweets um, in the study, about 9%, which they considered to have pass along value. Uh, that, that would be sort of worth looking, worth passing on, worth recommending, worth having someone else read. Um, and then the rest of them were just self promotion and, and, and spam. So around this time, uh, Twitter 
began to reorient itself and um, in some sense uh, re remake itself and, and it had a lot to do um, with um, uh, this or it was reflected in this the change from what are you doing in the slogan in the, in the tagline in the byline to to what's happening um, and and this particular change in what's happening coincided or went hand in hand with with a new Twitter uh, with a Twitter which um, which we saw some of in prior to this um, but this was this was the event following Twitter this was the Twitter um, where you where where there was news before news um, so there were a couple of famous uh, precursors to the to the news following Twitter to the new Twitter to Twitter too um, there were uh, quite uh, serious uh, forest fires brush fires in in the US which were followed uh, um, on by news followers on Twitter uh, quite uh, avidly where the news was 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 first reported on Twitter um, there was the uh, the famous landing of, of, of a plane, of an airplane in the Hudson River in the, in the US, uh, which the first photo of which appeared on Twitter. And Twitter became then this kind of, again, sort of new media becoming this sort of anticipatory medium, this place where things happened first. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and of course, where there are questions of, of reliability and, and, and uh, whether, whether things on Twitter were too fresh to be true. Um, but nevertheless, Twitter as a news following medium really came into, into force during the Iran election crisis of, uh, of 2009, uh, where Twitter was first um, uh, called uh, a sort of revolutionary uh, medium. Uh, so Iran's uh, tr Twitter revolution um, as reported uh, across, uh, across uh, new media. So what I want to uh, talk a little bit about um, is 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 this new Twitter and 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 how to study it? So this is this is the quote unquote debanalized Twitter, the, the Twitter that is no longer the what I'm having for lunch Twitter, but rather uh, a Twitter uh, which is which is serious and substantive uh, and as an object of study uh, for not just Twitter studies but also for for, for social research. So. This is, um, this is what uh, we did um, in June of 2009 during the Iran election crisis. Um, straight away, uh, we started collecting tweets uh, from a particular hashtag. Now, um, there are any number of different ways of, of creating a tweet collection. Uh, at this time, um, the, the hashtag was considered to be the, um, the, the, the standard way um, the idea that the hashtag, as introduced by users, would form would be a sort of topic uh, thread, would organize content, um, and this particular hashtag was was considered uh, uh, important. So what we did is is we captured all the tweets from the uh, Iran election hashtag uh, for right at the beginning of the Iran election crisis in, in, 2000, in June 2009. Um, um, all for about 20 days, um, and that's a particular assumption of a of a of a sort of cycle or a news cycle or an attention cycle. Uh, this sort of 20 days. This is also, uh, incidentally, the the length of time that one. This is the how far how far back in time one can go if one begins a, a tweet collection at any given time. You can have uh, uh, 20 days. Um, and so this is a typical uh, uh, time frame. Um, we archived them now. You see here that, that some of the images, uh, the user images are, are broken. This is typical for web archiving. Um, uh, and you see some of the, some of the statistics. Um, this is the collection. Now on Twitter, um, you arguably, when you uh, qu when you query with a hashtag or with keywords or a series of hashtags and a series of keywords, you're making a collection. Um, yeah, and, the, and what's important 
is is um, is that's a, a kind of it's a kind of substantive editorial approach um, to bringing content together, and it is different. It's more of a, in the humanities tradition, and it's different from a sample, which is more in the social scientific tradition, uh, which uh, which requires a different kind of uh, of, uh, of technique. Now there is also a sample available. Uh, of, uh, of tweets, uh, Twitter makes available the one percent uh, random one percent sample, so one percent of all tweets for a particular period of time. So that's a sample. However, when you are querying with hashtags or keywords, you're making a collection, um, and and that's a more of an editorial approach um, uh, than than is a sample. So here is the collection that we made from this single hashtag uh, around election. Um, it has about 650,000 tweets. It has, most of them are in English. Uh, very famously, Evgeny uh, Morozov, uh, when critiquing uh, studies of Twitter as, as in particular, Iran uh, election uh, uh, studies, related studies of Twitter, he said that, uh, well, at the time from, um, from Tehran, there were about five people tweeting from the streets, um, and on the basis of that, um, you've made all these 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 major studies. And this is um, this is in in Morozov's uh, debate with, uh, with 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 Clay Shirky, which you might be familiar with, about the value of uh, of social media as a social research tool. Um, nevertheless, this is the collection. Um, you'll see that that it's mainly indeed uh, an English language uh, uh, set, with the vast majority. Uh, being being in English, um, it also uh, you see the number of um, unique uh, users, uh, which is quite high. It's like a hundred thousand out of out of six hundred fifty thousand. Hundred thousand are are uniques. So this has uh, it has quite a quite a spread. Um, so the question was, how do we? turn Twitter into something <coughs> meaningful, or, or, or the Twitter stream. Um, and not only um, something that is the live Twitter stream that you're trying to follow, which is not necessarily so easy, um, into something that uh, could be used to create an account of the events uh, on, on the ground. So how do you turn Twitter into a, this just should say, storytelling machine? So you filter out, what we did is we filtered out the top retweets, the, the top three retweets per day. And we put them in chronological order as opposed to the reverse chronological order that Twitter uh, provides. So we put them in, in chronological order, the top re three retweets a day. Um, and you, you see, um, and by the way, um, this was a media art uh, exhibition which, which we showed um, in a number of places, um, in particular in, uh, in Barcelona. It's also was, it's taken up in the uh, permanent collection of the uh, Netherlands Institute for, for Media Art um, as, as, a, as, as, a, as, a, as a media art piece. But we think it's also um, a, a good uh, proof of concept of, of how, you, how you turn Twitter into a storytelling machine more generally. So this is a large canvas um, that's about the size uh, that you see here, um, but, but then longer. Um, so subsequently, what we did is we filtered out sub-narratives um, using a similar technique. Um, now, this is uh, qualitative in character. Uh, we read through um, the, uh, the tweets, the top retweeted tweets uh, per day. And we picked out manually a number of different themes running through these, these tweets. And then you see um, very, very quickly that you can, uh, in some way, separate, even though they're uh, related, um, those tweets um, that are uh, mainly about Twitter and the internet from those tweets that are mainly about what's happening on the ground. So you can, you can study Twitter both as, as social media as well as uh, societal uh, phenomena at the same time. Um, and, and so here, the, that was done uh, through, these, through picking out these, uh, these sub-narratives. Um, so there is a, there, there, 
there are some narratives on internet censorship uh, and on um, um, the, you know the 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 internet being um, or communications being taken down by the Iranian uh, government at the time um, that Facebook was down that that SMS was down etc. Uh, you also see a sort of very interesting moment, and this is sort of in Twitter studies, uh, where all of the people using this hashtag, and this is at the top, are asked to change um, their um, location. Um, everybody using this hashtag, everybody using this hashtag, are asked to, to change their location to Tehran. Um, so as to... Um, so, so as to create noise, so that authorities on the ground do not know the location of the of uh, the users, cannot find the people who are tweeting from the from from the streets, um, and and arrest them. Uh, so you see, so you see here uh, very specifically now the interplay uh, between social media and 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 events, uh, the events on the ground now. Ultimately, what we created um, was, a, was a narrative, um, and it went something like this. Musavi holds an emergency press conference. The voter turnout is 80%. SMS is down. Musavi's website and Facebook are blocked. Police are using pepper spray. Musavi is under house arrest. He's prepared for martyrdom. Nada is dead. There's a riot in the square. First aid is here. Bon Jovi sings Stand By Me in support. Ahmadinejad has confirmed the winner. Light a candle for the people of Iran. Now, this is the, the story, ultimately, that's distilled from 650,000 tweets using this particular technique, where you, sort of, where, you, where you boil it down into telling a kind of compelling story of, uh, of, what's, of, of what's happening uh, there. Now, what's important um, is uh, that uh, this is a particular technique. Um, and we've also built this particular technique into, uh, into TCAT. This is top retweeted tweets um, per day. Uh, and, and it does require also manual work thereafter. But nevertheless, the question of how to debanalize Twitter or how to turn Twitter into something, uh, into a kind of compelling storytelling machine, this is a technique uh, to do that. And uh, in some sense, I, I call this um, one of a series of uh, types of networked content analysis. So a new form of content analysis, whereby you're using uh, methods of the medium, you're using um, those digital objects that organize content, in this particular case, retweets, uh, and at the same time, you're using the um, uh, also, another method of media in the sense of you're, you're counting most retweeted. So this is also how retweets um, uh, rise to the, the, how topics trend. So you're in some sense using a sort of trending topics uh, form uh, a sort of algorithm and then repurposing it, not um, uh, for either marketing or for um, seeing what's happening on Twitter, but actually uh, looking at a particular event. So in some sense, and, and the other term that we coined um, to, to describe this kind of work is, is remote event analysis. So how do you follow or how do you study an event remotely? So you're not there. Um, you're not on the ground. And so the, in, in some sense, it's an alternative form uh, of, uh, of journalism. And in, in, in some, in another sense, it's it's a it's a form of uh, of, of data-driven journalism. So 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 there there are reporters on. It doesn't replace. It's not a substitute. There are reporters. There, there's there are reporters on the ground. There are eyewitnesses. There are, uh, there are those interviewing eyewitnesses. However, how do you follow the stream? <coughs> one of the one of the most frustrating. Uh, things for many, for many journalists and, and for others is you go to the event and then you realize that you know less about what is happening at it than if you're watching your screens. Or that's how you feel. So you're at the event all excited and then you're like, wait, where's my screen? Um, I, you know, and then, and then, you, and then you're, you're watching the events and, you're, and you have your second screen 
Um, but then the question is, well, how do I organize the content on the second string? Answer, well, here's one technique. Um, and of course, there are others. OK, I want to, um, in some sense, conclude with, 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 with the third Twitter, uh, which is a, a kind of sobering Twitter on the one hand. Uh, on the other hand, after these two exciting Twitters, after the friend following, the ambient friend following, the intimate Twitter, uh, the Twitter, which seems like Babel, but but if you're um, if you know the person, it's extreme. That's who you're following, extremely significant. Two, the kind of expert use of Twitter, the the the, the kind of news junkie Twitter, the the, the event following Twitter, making the expert list, following what's happening in your field, following what's happening in the news, following what's happening in politics. Um, Twitter two. Now Twitter three is Twitter as data set as a kind of generic uh, data set, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a data commodity um, that's being sold. So if you want access to Twitter data, um, especially Twitter data that goes back longer than 20 days, so historical Twitter data, it's going to cost you. If you want access to the, the, the proverbial fire hose, it's going to, and, and you need to take, a, take out a subscription, it's going to cost you data. Um, uh, is now a commodity uh, which is made available by a company in collaboration with a, with a, a wholly owned subsidiary um, that is um, a company that, is, uh, that answers to its, to its shareholders. Now, this, this Twitter as, as, um, as a data commodity um, has been critiqued and, 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 and criticized uh, quite severely. Now, the, the, this first happened um, in 2011 um, when Twitter, in preparation for going to the, uh, to the, to the stock market, um, changed its terms of service. Uh, and this was major for using Twitter data. So it changed its terms of service, um, um, whereby one is no longer allowed um, to uh, uh, share a tweet collection. So you've made a data set, uh, uh, but you, you can't make it publicly available, or you can't share it. Um, now, this was critiqued um, in academia because suddenly, and this is, the, the, this is uh, uh, one of the uh, fam famous quotations, um, that basically all the PhD students who were using Twitter data uh, uh, for, their, for, their, for their PhD basically just lost their work. Um, and researchers that were close to saying something meaningful uh, now have no way to do so uh, because you no longer can share uh, your data. Now, now this, was, this, was, this is serious, um, and it has prompted all sorts of different uh, activities. Um, uh, on the one hand, researchers are, are trying to uh, create consortia or other arrangements um, so that uh, tweets or tweet collections can be shared, can, so you can make your data available so that other academics who are looking at your studies on the basis of particular data can, can check the data as well. So that's, that, that is uh, considered part of um, uh, collaboratory projects, uh, open data projects, part, uh, the, the sort of trend whereby you append your data set to your paper, you make your data available online. So, so how, how did you do that with Twitter data? Um, so there are, there are various activities in that direction. The other, the other activity was that Twitter sort of nearly at the same time, um, almost symbolically announced that it was donating its entire collection of tweets to the Library of Congress in the US. Now, this move um, seemed, for a moment at least, to deflect the criticism of, 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 uh, of Twitter, the company, uh, because if then the data were at the library, then one could um, then study it uh, via, via, of course, the library. However, when you, when you move Twitter, um, from, it, from the medium, if you will, 
to the library and it becomes an archived object, you will realize that it becomes something very, very different. So, so uh, Twitter becomes qu something quite different as an archived object. Um, and and this, is, this in itself um, is, a, is an object of study. So what's the difference between Twitter in, in embedded in the medium and Twitter as an, as an archived object? Now, the first sort of indications of the difference between uh, Twitter data uh, through a streaming or a search API, however much it costs, and however uh, um, the various settings and the, and the various rate limits, etc., will have an impact on your data. The difference between that and Twitter as an ob uh, archived object became clear in some of the early documents put out by the Library of Congress. After their first uh, um, announcement of, of acquiring the collection, which they announced, the Library of Congress was very excited, they said they announced how, how tweet it is, so how sweet it is that they got this collection. Sorry, very bad. Um, from that initial announcement um, to, um, to the, the documents that came out, you could see a little bit what, uh, what the difference is. Um, so, so the first question was, well, do you have to go to the library in order to gain access? Now, this is, this is, this is not unusual. If you want to go to the, uh, the National Web Archive here in the Netherlands, um, you have to go to the National Library and access it there. Um, so the question was, well, do we have to actually go to the library to get it? And then, and then what do we need to do in order to have access? Well, we first of all have to be a bona fide researcher. We have to have a research proposal. So, so there are any number of different hurdles. So this sort of Twitter as a kind of, um, as an object of digital cultural studies, as a playful object, um, uh, changes quite, quite, quite significantly into something that, that becomes this, um, this object within the hallowed walls of, 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 the, of the library. Um, you also have to agree to a number of things that you, that you won't uh, agree to a number of sort of Twitter-esque terms of service that you won't redistribute, uh, etc. cetera. Um, now, the Library of Congress has received um, any number of proposals, and they're, they're quite interesting because you see in the proposals that they received how, how Twitter has become a sort of generic data set to study just about anything. And, and, and the early studies, are, um, and there are a number of them that have come out, studying Twitter, using Twitter to study, to, uh, actually as a, as a, as a, as a, a prediction mechanism. Um, this anticipatory medium comes back quite a lot. So can we, can we use Twitter to predict the elections? Can we use Twitter to predict who will win um, Academy Awards and Emmys and these sorts of, these sort of in, within celebrity culture? Uh, can we use Twitter um, uh, to uh, uh, predict uh, uh, sentiment? So this is how, in some sense, Twitter studies have become entwined with this idea um, that it, in Twitter you can find the animal spirits, that you can find um, what the sentiment of the, of, of the people um, uh, is. And so, so ha hand in hand with the rise of, 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 of big data and analytics comes this interest um, in sentiment sentiment studies um, and, the, and, 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 and all the promises that go along with uh, being able to extract how, how we feel and therefore what we might do from Twitter. So of course this makes it very, very interesting uh, in, uh, in, in, in marketing. Okay. To sum up, so, so Twitter has um, transformed itself. Uh, itself from the what are you doing, what, are, what am I having for lunch medium, to the what's happening, uh, to the revolutionary meeting, to the news following, to the uh, substantive event, to something, uh, you, could, you could call it a full transformation, to something where none of the data were valuable, to all of the data are now valuable, which is, which is remarkable. Um, and, 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 and you could, you could be critical and call it the full commodification of, of, of Twitter data uh, and the successful 
uh, commodification of, uh, of, of, of Twitter as big data machine, useful uh, for, for, for marketing and prediction and sentiment, the sentiment of the, of the people, the masses, the, the buyers, the consumers. Um, uh, and, and indeed, um, it is uh, something where you're still um, not fully sure what it is that you're studying when you're studying uh, uh, Twitter. So, um, and, uh, so are you studying a kind of sphere as one was studying some time ago when one was studying the blogosphere? Are you studying the Twitter sphere? Is this, does it have dynamics in and of itself? Um, or are you uh, uh, studying something else? And, and it seems as, as though Twitter has been successful um, in, in itself making the case, but also having others make the case for it um, that, that Twitter is, um, is the, the, the platform, the, the data platform, where you, in fact, uh, most significantly lose the media effects. Okay, that's it. Um, thanks very much. We'll see you next week.